Hi, uh, I'm Jason Hall. Uh, you can find me on the internet at I'm Jason H. Um, and I'm here to introduce Co, the only good way to build Go containers. Um, thank you all for having me. Um, so I had a professor once who was just an incredible speaker, incredible, engaging performer uh, on stage, and I always admired them. And I asked them one time what their secret was, and they said, um, every good presentation has to have a title that grabs your attention. First, get people in the seats. Um, every good presentation is like a story, like a magic trick. You, in, you introduce characters, you have a rising action, you introduce conflict, you resolve it, you reveal like a, like a magic trick. And it doesn't have to be 100% true so long as it's compelling. Um, I hope that I have um, grabbed your attention with the title, The Only Good Way to Build Go Containers. Um, I will show you the magic trick in a second. And uh, that professor never existed. That is an entirely made up story. Um, but the rest of this is true, I promise. Or is it? It is. Oh, or is it? So uh, like I said, I'm here to perform a magic trick. And I'll even tell you uh, what it is. Uh, I'm going to make a Docker file disappear. First of all, um, raise your hand if you have uh, used Go, or sorry, used Docker to build a Go container using a Docker file, something like this, right? Like, everybody look at this. You've seen a million of these. Um, this is the, this is copied verbatim from the official Docker guide for building Go container images. If you Google Docker build Golang, this is the first result. This is at the top of the page. This text has been copied hundreds of billions of times. Um, first off, scroll all the way down to the bottom of that page where they tell you the actual way you should do it. Um, this is not the right way to do it. This is the right way to do it using a multi-stage Docker file build. Everyone who raised their hand and said that they used the other one is either wrong or doing it wrong. Um, but that's the first copy-pastable Docker file you find, so that's what everyone uses. Um, this is a multi-stage build. The idea is that um, you don't need the same things at build time as you need at runtime. That's especially true for Go. Um, so we split up the build stage and the release stage. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> it wasn't me. My, the magic trick, yes, exactly. Uh, all right, ignore my helper behind the screen. Um, so yeah, in a multi-stage uh, Docker file build, you have uh, the build phase. This uses a Go container to run Go build and put it uh, into an output uh, binary. It, the official one runs a test for some reason. Uh, and then the final stage is to package the binary that you built in the build stage into the actual minimal container image that doesn't contain Go, that doesn't, con or, yeah, doesn't contain Go, doesn't contain almost anything. Uh, and that's what you actually release. So you pull out the built binary and put it into the uh, release image. And this is like the best practice. This is like the, the way you should be doing it. Um, first of all, like I'm going to get rid of this, but uh, first of all, we can get rid of that test section. You don't need to test like test before you build a container. It's better that way. Um, but more importantly, why build in the container? Why do you why do you need to build in a container like this? Um, in general, we build in containers because we don't trust the build process. Node and Ruby and Python and plenty of other things, as part of their build process, expect to run arbitrary scripts, fetch other stuff from the internet, and run random things and format your code or like RMRF or do whatever. Um, we're not worried about that at all as, as gophers, right? Uh, there was actually recently a CVE where Go build could be tricked into running arbitrary code, and it was considered a CVE that required a breaking change to fix. Like, that's how seriously Go takes not running random garbage at build time. So we don't really need to build in the container. Um, we can just do Go build and then Docker build. And your Docker file just becomes copy that thing I built before into there and set it as the entry point, and we're good to go. So even right here, if you stop Right here, you will have some benefits. Um, this build will share your build cache and be faster. Um, and it avoids a, a bunch of tricky gotchas with the order of these copy lines up here. A bunch of um, tutorials about how to make your Docker file faster are like, oh, switch these two copy lines. And now it's like 20 seconds faster. Why? Mm -hmm. um, so even if you just stop there uh, and you zone out, uh, maybe try this. This is cool. Um, so, But what's left? Um, the really, the only three lines after that are um, from some base image, copy my thing in, make it the entry point. Um, and you may be asking yourself, or at least I did, um, 
what's Docker giving us at this point, right? Like, what, what is it even doing if it's not even running the build or doing anything? Um, I find it useful sometimes when I find something is weird or feels off to just take a step back and think, what am I trying to do? What is it that I'm trying to do? I'm trying to build a Go binary, trying to put it on top of some small image and make that binary the entry point so that when I run the container image, it runs. Um, and that's exactly what code does. It's effectively Go build and Docker build, but called Co build. Um, there's a bit more to it than that, which I'll, I'll tell you about, but um, that's basically the gist of what Co build does. Um, it, co build uh, builds a Go binary. It literally runs exec.command go build whatever you tell it uh, with some flags and runs it. And then it puts it on top of a small base image and it makes that binary the entry point. Uh, all of which it can do without pulling that base image. Like it uses a small one, but if it had a huge one, it would not have to pull anything. And pushes that resulting image to the container registry using only HTTP APIs. There's no Docker daemon involved in doing that. So there are some security benefits just there in not needing to run a Docker daemon. And poof, aha, I have let you uh, remove your Docker file. Everything works wonderfully. Uh, you can even turn off your Docker daemon. You can like close Docker desktop. It saves a lot of battery. Check some time how much, yeah, thank you. Woo! Uh, check some time how much battery uh, Docker desktop is, is spending. Um, <laughs> the goal is that co-build is simple for most common cases. Um, if you can use that Docker file from uh, Docker's official website, you should be able to use co and get rid of the Docker file. Um, I think we talked, uh, uh, we had heard earlier about how Go spends a lot of time and effort and care on polishing everything about the developer experience for Go. There's this beautiful, simple Go tool. Uh, and then we wrap it in 300 lines of Docker files and like, all right, ship it to prod. Um, and that's always made me a little sad. So um, Co's, um, Co tries to extend that simplification to building the container image that you then deploy to prod. Um, so think of it more like Go, which you already know and presumably like at least a little bit. Um, like I mentioned, it uses a very small image. There's nothing in there that doesn't need to be there. It's just gonna run that, that Go binary when you run. Um, you just need to set co docker repo as an environment variable to say where to push. Um, co build is fast, mainly because go build is fast. It doesn't do anything beyond running go build and then making some HTTP calls to your registry. Like I said before, it takes advantage of your build cache. There's a bunch of tutorials about how to make Docker file builds faster by sharing your build cache with the host. And it's just a ton of pain and toil. Um, we just get rid of that. Um, it also is fast because it avoids doing work when it doesn't have to. If it can detect that it doesn't even have to run go build, it won't. Uh, if it runs go build and decides that it has already built this binary before, it will not push a new binary to the registry. Uh, when it pushes, it will see if the registry already has it and not push it if it already has it. Um, all of these things uh, mainly come down to how good Go makes it for us. Like Go has reproducible builds by default. Go's build is very fast and has a build cache. We just take advantage of it. Another huge benefit of Go that, uh, again, we get for free by basing on Go is multi-platform support. Go has incredible cross-compilation support um, and Go just takes advantage of it. Um, if you do uh, Go build dash dash platform all, it will say, hey, I'm going to go into this base image that has support for these uh, eight architectures. I'm going to do a Go OS Linux whatever and Go OS Windows whatever. Uh, go build for each of those architectures and then put it all together and stitch it up and put it in the registry. If you only need a couple of uh, platforms, you can just specify which platforms you want. Once again, Go makes this really easy for us. Go does like almost nothing. Go just does all of this magic for us. Yes, even Windows. If you have ever had to build a Windows container image, I am so sorry. Um, if you've ever had to use a Windows container image, I'm so sorry. Uh, and, few, and, and I think there's uh, a lot of exciting stuff we could do with Wasm also. The, the Wasm ecosystem is uh, large and growing. And uh, I think there's a lot of cool stuff that Go and Co and Wasm could do together. All right, lightning round. Uh, other, other things that Go does uh, besides be simple and fast, uh, it generates SBOMs. Uh, actually, Go generates the SBOMs. Go just translates those into SPDX SBOMs and attaches them to the container image that it pushes. 
once again, thank you Go for, for doing all of that for us. Um, there's a static file uh, convention for including static files in the container image. If you have a directory called CoData, Co will say, oh, I should put all of these things also in there. It pairs very nicely with uh, HTTP file server, which if you haven't used it, it's so simple, so good. Um, thank you Go for HTTP file server. Um, and a really exciting thing that, uh, that Co does is have very, very simple YAML templating. You might think, oh no, God, uh, YAML templating, this is gonna suck. Um, but how that works is if you have some YAML and you have a key in that YAML, can I have a mouse? Yeah, there we go. Uh, if you have a, a value in that YAML that has co colon slash slash, Co says, ooh, this looks like an import path. I will find it, I will go build it, I will put it into a container image like I do, and then I will, uh, when you run co resolve, it does all that, and then it just outputs that same thing, but with the built image reference in that place instead of your little thing. It doesn't do anything more complicated than that, I promise. There's no for loops, there's no ifs. If you want that, go somewhere else. I'm not writing that. Um, there's even co apply, which is literally just like the same thing, except also kubectl will apply it to your cluster if you're interested. Um, and there's even uh, some early plans to integrate data from the GoVuln database so that um, when Co builds an image, it can say, okay, well, I know that there's a vulnerable dependency, I depend on a vulnerable module, but GoVuln DB says, I don't call any of the bad stuff in there, so I'm going to attach a report that says, this is fine, basically. Uh, <laughs> it's not done yet, it's not done yet, we haven't done it yet, but thank you. Um, whoop. Got excited. Okay, there's a couple more integrations I want to talk about. One is GitHub Actions. Um, this is not trimmed. This is the literal full GitHub Actions workflow to build and deploy, or build and uh, push a co-built image. By default, it just says, oh, I'm running in GitHub. I will off to GitHub. I will push to GHCR. Boom, done. Um, we have a eh, somewhat alpha uh, Terraform provider, so that if you're, uh, does anybody use Terraform? Hands up, Terraform. Cool, all right, yeah, it's pretty good, Terraform. Um, uh, we have a co-build resource that will take this import path, build it uh, if it needs to, build it, and then give you as an output where it built it and pushed it to. Um, there's a bunch of really cool stuff we're doing with Terraform right now, uh, which is an another talk for another day. Uh, when you Terraform apply, it will build and deploy, and when you Terraform plan, it will tell you if there's a diff only if your code changed. So like you don't need to redeploy this service because the code behind it did not change. We would not produce a new image. It would not result in a uh, change to your service. Um, mainly you may have heard me say a few times, thank you, Go. Uh, if there's only one takeaway, if you decide not to use Co, um, and, and I just wanna hit this first and foremost, uh, focusing on Go has made this possible. Um, by focusing on one common use case, we simplified and optimized a lot. Uh, regardless of the provocative nature of the title of this talk, Docker is a really actually incredible tool. Uh, it lets you do anything relatively safely in a container. The problem is anything is kind of a lot, and so you can't take advantage of a lot of optimizations and a lot of things, uh, simplifications and a lot of polish because you have to be the do anything machine. Um, Co says, I'm gonna do one thing and I'm gonna do that thing I think, really well. Um, also for Docker, like it runs things in a sandbox, but creating that sandbox requires privilege, and so you're back to a sort of state where like, uh, it's terrible. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanna say is uh, by, by focusing not just on anything, but on Go specifically, uh, we get to stand on the shoulders of giants. We get cross-compilation for free, we get a fast, uh, heavily cached build for free, we get an import path convention that we abuse everywhere. We get SBOMs, we get uh, all kinds of things. So um, thank you to the Go community uh, who is all here uh, for being those giants we get to stand on. Um, this is the last thing, I just have like a bonus random slide of random stuff. Uh, this is the library, the uh, Go container registry is the library we use to build Co and a bunch of other tools. Um, if you would like to evangelize the Co lifestyle to your non-Go brethren, um, we have, there's a thing called JIB, which is basically Co for Java. There's Co for .NET, like built into the .NET work, uh, uh, tool chain. There's a, a very cursed just-in-time build service. Uh, if you pull an image, like co.contain.me slash some import path, this service will build it into a container and serve it to you on the fly. Um, it's a bad idea, don't do it, it's cursed. 
Um, but it was really fun to build. So um, yeah, that's all I got. Thank you. <laughs>